welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today we are going to be drawing a simple value scale in pencil. And I had another one of these that I filmed five years ago and I feel like it needs to be redone. And before we go too much more into drawing the figure, I think it's important for us to talk about how to create um, value and form on the figure um, using um, shading. And so we're going to be doing this in pencil. I have a link below to the one that I did in ink. So if you're drawing with a pen, how you would shade in pen using hatching and stuff like that. So let's get started. We are going to be drawing like a long rectangle and dividing it into seven squares. So you could use, I mean, you can do this as exact as you would like, or you can just do it. You can eyeball it. However you would like. I'm just going to be doing it by inches because it seems to be easy for me to do that since I have a ruler. But feel free just to eyeball it and freehand this rectangle. I do need to just divide it into seven, two. Okay, to divide something into seven, um, this is an easy way. Let's zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. See that? Okay. To divide it into seven, what you wanna do is just create like your middle box first. So this box right here. And then you're just going to divide these two sides with two lines into three. So one, two, one, two. So now we have seven boxes across. Let me just, instead of zooming in, I wanna bring my camera a little bit lower. Oops, wrong one. Kind of crazy looking. Okay, just fast forward that. All right, so hopefully you've drawn your box and these are in seven different squares. So we're gonna be making seven different shades and we're going to be going from dark to light. So this one's going to be like completely black and this one's going to be white. Okay, and we want it to be like as seamless as possible. So we don't want it to like jump from dark to light. We want it to be very, very gradual. So let's just start with the easiest one. Let's just fill this one in with um, our pencil and you can use um, different pencils to do this as well. If you're using a B pencil, that means you're going to have softer lead and you're going to be able to make it darker. If you're using H pencils, you're going to have a harder lead and that even if you press hard, it just draws a lot lighter. So fill it in as dark as you can. And then in the next one, we're just gonna try to ease up the pressure just a little bit. So here we go. So I'm still pressing down, just not as hard. I might need to press a little bit harder. It doesn't seem like it. It should be really subtle, just a really subtle change. No jumping in this value scale. And then next to it, we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna ease up the pressure a little bit. And if you notice, I'm just kind of doing like these long oval kind of strokes. You can shade it in however you want. You could use the same direction of line. But I don't like how that's darker. You have that. No bueno. Try not to do that. <laughs> and then next to it, we're going to be pressing even lighter. And I'll try to fill in my whole square. This is our middle square, so we're reaching like our middle tone. It's hard to keep the pressure, you know, the same when you move. And then this one, we are just like barely, barely pressing down. And then this, 
square, we are just, I mean, it is barely even there. So now you have the value scale. I will give you the names of these things if you really want them. Um, I, sometimes I don't really <laughs> use them all the time, but this would be the, let's see, I've done it in the opposite direction of how I had my other one. So the lightest area is called the highlight. So you can write it in if you want. I'm, I'm gonna write it in, but you don't have to. So this one is the highlight, the widest part. And then we have our light tone. <laughs> this is the light tone. Then we have our mid tone. And then when we get to the very, very center, this is actually reflected light. I wonder how often this is actually like really the case. I don't know. And then we have our shadow our core shadow, and then very last, this darkest area right here, this would be our cast shadow. Cast shadow. So I don't know why I write, because I doubt you can even read my handwriting. It's so small in this. But what you wanna look for in a good value scale is to see if it's gradual it shouldn't jump like it's pretty jumpy in here, right? From dark to this tone. So if this was a drawing and this was a shadow, I'm just going to do another value scale above it where I didn't divide it up into these squares. Okay. I think that's helpful. I'm just going to hurry and draw this. There is no hurrying and drawing with a ruler though. What am I thinking? I <laughs> rulers. I just figured the bottom one was. Okay. So now, and you can try this too. So now we're going to be pressing our hardest on this side. So just press down as hard as you can. We're still in that cast shadow. And then we're moving into the core shadow. So we're just loosening up just a little bit, but I'm still pressing hard. And then in shadow, I'm just easing up the pressure just a little bit, but I am still pressing. And then reflected light, I'm just pulling off a little bit more. Mid-tone, just there. And then light tone is barely, barely there. So did you do that with me? I hope you did. And I hope it was helpful. Uh, because when we're drawing the face and we're drawing noses or whatever you're trying to draw, I think it's good to practice these value scales because some of us... Uh, Maybe you're too much up here. Maybe you're too much down there. And, and sometimes that actually can be a really cool thing. But if you're trying to capture all of the values on an object, most objects will have all of these values on them. Um, but the problem is, at least not the problem, but it gets difficult when you're drawing something with maybe color, right? Where someone's wearing a red shirt and it's not white, right? So what do you do? Um, a lot of artists actually paint, like even painters, they will first paint a painting in, um, and I can't, I'm totally spacing on the word for it right now, but they'll paint it in like black and white tones, but it's usually like a brown and white tone. So they do an underpainting with these values on it before they add the color on top, just so they can get the values right. That's how critical it is, um, or it was, whatever, <laughs> for them to do it. Um, so now what I want you to do, now that we've talked about these, um, I want you to practice shading a sphere. This is a very, or you know an apple. Let's just choose an apple or a sphere or something that's kind of round in your house and try to shade it and use all of these values. So um, I think about the mid-tone is like the color of it. Like if you're doing an apple, it's the mid-tone, right? And then you have the highlight. Some people just erase the highlight out of the mid-tone or out of the shadow. So try to draw an apple or um, an egg if you have a white egg, even if you don't have a white egg, an, an egg is a great thing to draw. Just be careful using it with high school students because one time one exploded in our classroom. So you can get a little crazy, but it's a great thing to draw because it's white and it's a super simple shape. And what I would also recommend is use one light source, whether it's your window or one lamp light or just something to make it a little bit easier for you to see all of those values. 
because when you have multiple light sources, it just tends, like look at this, you can see that this is my eraser. It's so dirty, but you can see what's happening here, right? Look, I have two lights right there, and there's one shadow here, one shadow here. So let's actually look at this. This is great. We can, I wish it was cleaner. Oh man, do I have time to just like clean it off so it looks better? No, I don't. Okay, so look at this eraser. I'm gonna zoom in on this actually. Oh, I actually have solid white shapes. Let me go grab one really quick. It's just in my closet here. Intermission. <laughs> oh, whoops. Okay. It might be a little bit easier to see on these. Um, but on the eraser, you can totally see reflected light. And you can see the shadow, the cast shadow is for sure the darkest, right? So anyway, that's kind of cool. This would be just maybe shadow. I don't know what that would be. So here we have, let's back off a little bit, camera. I'm just gonna, you know what? Maybe your assignment, I'm gonna move this. It's to draw this. There you go. So what I want you to do, I'm just gonna turn maybe one of these lights off. Let's see what happens. Whoops. Uh, let's turn this one off. Oh man, I wish you could see this from the side. It looks so cool. I'm gonna switch it. Let's see, I just want you to see the full thing and the shadow, maybe from the side. Let's just do it from the top, okay. There is our shape, back off a little bit, camera. Okay, so we're looking at it from the top. Um, the light is over. One thing to check too, when you're drawing this at home, look for the direction of the light. So my light source is right here hitting this, right? That's why the shadow's here, that is a dead giveaway. And my light is a little bit lower, that's why the shadow's a little bit longer. If we were to move this forward, camera, will you move with me? The shadow should shrink. Yeah, see that? How it gets smaller as it goes towards the light, and then it's stretching as the light gets further away and more to the side. Wow, that's kind of cool to see. Okay. <laughs> Now what I want you to do, you if you don't have an egg or you don't have uh, an apple, why don't you just pause this and go ahead and draw this ball. So what we're looking for, I'm gonna point to these different areas, okay? We have a highlight right in here. It is just brighter than the paper below it. Then we kind of have our light tones around it in here. And then we're reaching the mid tones about right here. But then we get to our shadow which is this area right here. And this right here is reflected light. Do you see how it gets lighter? So that's basically the light is bouncing off the table and bouncing back up to hit the ball. And then we have our core shadow, which is just the darkest part in here. And then our cast shadow down here. So hopefully um, that's helpful. But pause the video if you don't have anything, you can just draw this. This would be a great thing to draw. Um, also, if you're just worried about making a perfect circle, just grab something and trace it, like a cup. That's a great, great way to do it. Here's a square, too. Well, that's kind of boring, actually, like that. Whoa, the shadow, what on earth? What have these lights done to my shadow? That is so crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Hmm. All right. Thank you so much for drawing with me today. I hope that helped you learn how to draw different values in pencil. And uh, I would love to see your homework assignments. <laughs> Post them to Instagram using hashtag Mr. Otter Studio, hashtag value study, hashtag uh, Mr. Otter Studio value study. <laughs> Whatever one you want to use. Um, but thank you so much for joining me and have a wonderful day. Tomorrow we are going to be drawing eyes and this ball comes in handy when drawing the eye. So have a great day.